So, what effect were we? What were we doing? Oh yeah, we had a donut. All right, so we can shoot this guy, or we can't rather. We can't shoot this guy. So let's make it so the bullets can detect if there's a bad guy in the radius. So when we fend, uh, when we explode, we check a sphere overlap essentially of all the actors, and then we or all, all the primitives rather, and then we um, will explode essentially. But now let's check if we can actually detect this guy to see if we should be hitting any enemies and uh, destroying them. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go into the projectile. Uh, while you're in there, could you amp up the like the power of the like the outgoing force, so we don't have to like sort of toss it at them? Oh. We, we... <laughs> that's a good point, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Uh... Gosh, it's in the uh, It looks like that's actually hard coded. It's hard coded. Yeah, yeah, you have their velocity like equals for back vector times 500, so it's yeah, just do 1. 5, 5 meters per second. But it's skill. It's skill to toss it. Okay, let's see. Let's compile. It's like a rock toss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now it's hard-coded, but bigger. Yeah, bro. This yes. I solved it's harder-coded. I solved the problem. Okay, there we go. Now it's like an actual gun. Now this is easy. Now anyone can play this. Okay, let's actually make his collision uh, blocking as well, so I can actually shoot him in the face. Let's do that, actually. Let's do it so if I hit it, that's going to be easier, I think. Let's do it so if I hit him directly, then I will damage him. Uh, instead of doing like a sphere overlap, I think that's going to be easier. So, uh, let's first of all give him blocking. How do I do that? Let's say we want to do it in code for some reason. You guys remember? Yeah, you just find nearest corner and cry in it. Yes, that's the step one. <laughs> I tried that; it didn't work for me. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like a build-up. You have to like do it enough <laughs> so that you your, your like will of life will comes back. <laughs> then after you've done that, and after your you uh, looked yourself in the mirror for a bit, you guys remember? Uh, set set collision profile name. Yes, there we go. And then we'll do which collision profile would you say is fitting for this guy? Uh, block all dynamic. Yes. Why is it dynamic? Because it's moving. Yes. <coughs> so, so is that dynamic? The uh, like, is it blocking all things that are dynamic, or is it blocking all things and it's dynamic? Yeah, so that's the thing that's kind of confusing about this one. It's, it looks like it says, like, I am blocking all dynamic actors. But rather what this means is, I am blocking everything, and I'm also dynamic. So that's yeah, what okay. this means. It should say, like, block all as dynamic, I think, would be a better name. Uh, or block all and dynamic. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's the difference. Block all blocks the same things. It just sets the object type as static. That's the only difference between block all and block all dynamic. Um, so now we should be able to hit this guy if I play and if I compile. See, the thing is, like, you gotta make your own fun with Unreal. You gotta be like, okay, so what can I do when it's compiling? I can learn a new skill. I can learn a new language. I can, you know, catch up with friends. It's like, it's all about personal responsibility when it comes to this engine. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Get away! No! Get away! Get away! Get away from me! Okay, so it didn't work. Let's check the sphere here. See, we'll make our own fun here. Okay, so there's overlap all dynamic here. Let's try and compile again. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we just need to do it twice. I don't know. No? Did I save? Yeah. Okay, let's check the blueprint version then. I think I might know what has happened. Let's check. Yeah, okay, so this happened. For some reason, this think uh, it thinks this is overridden when it isn't. 
So I'm just gonna reset the default. Yeah, Rubik's Cubes are a great way to spend time when doing compiling. I bought my Rubik's Cubes just to have something to do when it's compiling. <laughs> so, so that's a great idea. Okay, so now we should be able to hit this guy. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, so... So now we can check... Okay, what did we actually hit? So if we hit the ground, we don't want to do anything. Like, we just want to do the normal explodey, explodey thing. And if we hit the guy, then we want to do something. So... The way I would do this... Is in the projectile here. Let's see. If we hit something, say if we have a blocking hit, then I will probably check here. So I'll do. Did we hit enemy? I will cast the hit actor. So I will do a fuck enemy. Enemy is equal to cast. A fuck enemy. I'm gonna explain it in a little bit. Uh, I will cast the uh, hit actor. Like so. And then I'll check if the enemy is valid. So I'll just include the enemy real quick. Uh, enemy. Fuck enemy. Go. No. Still not the path. I think it's just scared. Yeah, it's just scared. Whatever. Wait, this is probably fine. Okay, so what's happening here? Uh, I don't. Is there a cast, like a checked cast in uh, in Unity? I don't remember. There is, right? Yeah, it looks like um, in Unity you would write this as um, head actor as a fuck enemy, and that oh, would yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, so this is kind of like dynamic cast in the pure C++ if you, if you use that ever. Where it will actually check... It won't do use like a C-style cast, right? Because if we did a C-style cast here, like if we did just as, uh, as this. If you just did C-style here, then it would not do sh and it's sort of type checking to see is the actor actually a fuck enemy it will just cast it and just you know will crash essentially um most likely um but the casting here this is an unreal thing so the casting here it will go through the unreal um type system so the unreal reflection to actually compare the classes and see if the um, the input actor here, or the input object, is actually of this type, or if it's a child type of this, uh, this C++ class. And this includes blueprints, so even if this is a blueprint class, it will still detect that it's inheriting from a fuck enemy, so it will uh, do the cast. And I'm guessing that if the cast fails, it returns a null pointer? Is yes. that why you can just F off of it? Yes, that's not exactly. bad. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very good. I think the casting is very nice, and it's you know it's it's very cheap since they have their own uh, since they have their own um, reflection system. So uh, the casting is not very expensive. It's not like a dynamic cast, which is horrible. Um, so yeah. So we're gonna cast the actor to an a fuck enemy to see if that is the type of actor that we hit. So if this pointer is valid. That's what the if means. So if it's not zero. Uh, we could also do, if we want to be <laughs> very clear, we can just do is not null pointer. Uh, then we'll do something. We'll uh, log. Oh no! I hit enemy. There we go. Let's see if that works. Um, wouldn't wouldn't it be wait, like, wait. oh yeah, I hit an enemy? <laughs> but he's like, oh, I'm scared. I, I'm I'm too close to the dangerous enemy. What happened here? Can yeah, I open uh, include the, file? Yeah, the path since the projectiles in the player folder, or the enemies in the enemy folder, shouldn't you need to go up one level before going into the enemy folder? All oh, right. Is it? Is it not in the root? 
I guess the root is this folder. All oh, right, it is. So the root is here for the include for our module, since this is where the target is. So we might need to. Okay, so there is two way of I... doing this. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. So either we just type out the full path. We should never go back. Never ever go back and include paths. That's the worst. So don't type. <laughs> Uh, colon uh, dot dot slash enemy slash fuck enemy. This is super confusing. <laughs> so never do this. Uh, you will be universally hated. Um, so instead, what we'll do is that okay, this is the root directory. So we could type just out the full path in that case. We'll do fuck and then enemy and then fuck enemy. So we'll do something like this. And hopefully that should work. That's the wrong. That's not the right thing. Okay, so that works. Uh, we could also, if we're super nerds, we could add, because we don't really care about this fuck here. Like we 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 don't really want to have this. Like we want to treat this folder as the root folder for our module. So we could add this folder, this fuck folder, as a public include path so you know it it will start searching from this as a root essentially uh but let's not do that but let's just say we we can do that if we were turbo nerds but let's not do that now uh we will go we in that case we will go into the build.cs and add it as a uh, public include path here actually let's do it fuck it now that i'm here <laughs> now that i've opened it I have, I don't have autocomplete. Public. Sec module rules. Yeah, I'm going down here, whatever. Public, no. Include, whoops. Include, whoops. Search. Why aren't you searching? Oh, English, there we go. Include. Yeah, I'm going on a tangent. What up with? God, there's so many stuff. So here's essentially the um, all of the settings for the Unreal build system. Uh, I can't find Whatever. I've gone f down this rabbit hole far enough. Let's just get out of there. You can do it. I just don't remember the name. But know that you can. Um... So, so now if I hit this guy, we should be getting a log. So I'm just going to hit him and then check the log. So let's check the output log here. And there we go. Oh no, I hit an enemy whenever I'm hitting the enemy. Very cool. Any questions on that? I have a bit of maybe an unrelated question, but uh, before, uh, when you reference like a blueprint in the script, uh, what did you type? Was it like sub object and then a template? Yes, tier subclass of. Oh yeah, cool. Why is that required? Or like, is can you just write the, the actual type? Well. If you have a pointer to the actual type, that means you have a pointer to an instance, right? Right. So if I type like a enemy, a fuck enemy pointer, that's a pointer to a type to an instance. So like a one specific actor. Mm -hmm. But in the case where we use T subclass of, then we're pointing to an actual class. Like we're pointing to a. Uh, uh, like a blueprint or a C++ class. The right, actual sorry, class and not the instance. So that's when we use T subclass off and not just the pointer. Cool. But in this case, it's fine. We can just use the pointer because we're pointing to an instance of an enemy. So then we would use just the type name. Uh, cool. So that's nice. the difference. Cool. So let's do something on this guy then. Uh, let's kill him. So I will just do 
enemy destroy. Very easy. Oops. I didn't come out. And please, Unreal, don't do me like this. There we go. Okay, he's gone. So now when I shoot this guy, he's dead. Thoughts? Oh, that was that. Was that a, the tiniest clap? <laughs> Thank you. All right. So uh, let's maybe modify this so that we can. Oh, did you see that fucking snipe? Let's maybe modify this so that we can kill him with the area of effect as well. So even if we don't hit him directly, if we hit him just with the blast, he will still die. Does anyone have any... If we don't want to do another sphere overlap, let's say we only want to... Uh, we want to keep this code as it is. We don't want to add another like sphere overlap actors or anything. Can someone come up with a good idea to use this code to check if we're hitting an, an uh, enemy with our, uh, with our blasts? Uh, can't we just pretty much move the entire like cost thing into the for loop and use it on the component instead the component we can try we try to check if the hit components are of type enemy so i'll just cast the component in this case yeah like this let's try but it's the actor that's of type enemy mm. that's a good point can we take the actor's parent the components, yeah. Oh, there the components parent then. Mm -hmm. There we have the get, get owner. Yes. Which we're doing in the logging. There we go. So getting the owner will get the actor that the component is attached to. Very good. This should work fine, I think. Let's try it. One possible issue that I see this would be if uh, uh, if we hit two components that are owned with the same by the same actor. Mm. Very good, uh, very good observation. Let's see what happens. So if I blast him close by, uh, he died. Okay. So this guy has two components. He has a sphere and he has a static mesh, right? So he does have two primitive components on him. And remember, this uh, sphere overlap components will overlap uh, primitive components. Uh, but I can tell you that right now, it is not a problem. Right now, uh, this guy will only get overlapped once. Can you guys guess why? Why do you feel like I'm not scared of this? Is it because the component has to have a collider for it to overlap? Yes, exactly. So this is at the no collision. And remember, we have an object filter here. We are checking which type of object to actually overlap with. We'd had like, you know, uh, dynamic, we had pawn, and no, we didn't have pawn actually, we had physics object and so on. And since this is just no collision, it actually is world static. Okay, never mind. That analogy didn't work. Okay, it's no collision, so it needs to have collision to be overlapped with. Okay, my it, my explanation f f didn't work. Whatever, <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, when it doesn't have collision, it will not be considered uh, for the overlap check. Because I believe you, hmm? uh, destroying something in a for each loop, like something that you're looping over and then destroying it in the loop. Yeah. Is isn't that a Boo-boo? Isn't that a boo-boo? Uh, yeah, it, it potentially will be a boo-boo, actually. 
We can try if we get a boo boo. Let's try and uh, let's try and add. Let's let's say like, oh, I forgot to reset collision here. So let's say we set this to block all dynamic and see what happens. Potentially, we will boo boo on this. So let's see. If I hit this guy. Okay, so we only hit the sphere. I think it was actually just out of range to hit the thing. So I'm cl closer. Come closer. Then I'll hit him down here. Bah! Okay, so we did hit. Uh, here we hit fuck enemy 2 for sphere. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that sound? <laughs> it was like the perfect sine wave. Uh, and then we hit the enemy and then here we also collided with the static mesh and we hit the enemy again So here it seemed like it wasn't a problem. So that's interesting. I, I actually would expect that we had a problem Yeah, since I think Destroying an object that is already destroyed just returns false from the destroy function. So I think it's like allowed Yeah, it's it definitely doesn't destroy until later uh, until garbage collection comes so an actor is still valid, it's just sort of marked as destroyed. So, you know, the pointer won't become garbage. Um, so that's at least fine. Uh, but sometimes it will, you know, if we try to... I guess we aren't mutating it at all. I guess we're just sort of getting the owner on the component. Like, we're not really doing... We are adding radial impulse, I guess that would... I, I would expect this to complain. I would expect this to be some sort of check. But I guess add radial impulse doesn't really do anything interesting. Um... So I guess maybe that's why I guess the body instance is not very all that horrible. So I guess that's why it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yes, it is a good observation at least to say like, okay, we are destroying the enemy while we have an array of components attached to that enemy. And that should make us at least semi uh, uncomfortable. So we could do a separate overlap. Well, like, we could do a, an overlap actors just to get an array of actors. And then we could actually actor filter to get only enemies. Let's actually do that. I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's do it. Because that will fix that problem of having multiple primitives from the same actor in the same list. And I think that's actually a pretty bad problem if we have that. Why did we initially uh, use sphere overlap component instead? Uh, is that because, like, yeah, because we, we, can we just offset the root? Offset the root? Uh, the root component of the actor. If we get, like, the actor, it's, it's way old because the actor has no collision, no? Well, yeah, the actor has no collision. And also, since we're adding radial impulses to um, primitive components, if we did an actor overlap, we would have to get all of the primitive components on that actor to be able to add radial impulse. Right? Gotcha. Mm. So then we'd have to like sort of manually go through all the actors and get all the components and then go through all the components. So we're sort of a shorthand, if we just do sphere overlap components, we don't have to do that. We'll just have an array of all the components that should get a radial impulse, uh, which makes the code a little bit cleaner. Cool, nice. So let's do a sphere overlap actors then. Since we already have uh, the object types and all of that, that will be a little cleaner. World context will be this. Sphere post will be get act location. Oops. Radius 300. Object types, explode, overlap, object types, which is the magic array we did. And here we have an actor class filter. So here we can actually just do the filter right away. So we can just do an a fuck enemy as our filter. Which means we only want to consider this type of actor to overlap. Actors to ignore, we don't have any. So I'll just make a T array. Like That's so just an empty array. And then we have out actors. So I'll just make a T array here of out actors. Overlapped enemies. There we go. I went kind of quickly since it looks exactly the same as with the components here. Uh, the only difference is just this last 
array is not a component array. Still, in, uh, instead, it's an actor array. So now we have an array of overlap actors, uh, of overlap enemies, and we can be sure that each actor in here is this type a fuck enemy so we don't even need to do this null pointer check here when we're looping through we like we can be sure that it is that type already because we had that as a filter for our overlap check so i'll just do for auto uh, enemy i'll just do enemy actor overlap enemies and then inside of the for loop i will cast it to a enemy Let's just copy this actually. Then we don't need this. Like so. And then I'll just do get fetch all enemies that should die. Die, die, die. 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 Cool. Let's compile. Hopefully it works. Cool. So now we should only get... We should only get him once. Yeah, he doesn't even... I mean, yeah, he shows up twice in the list here. But since we don't destroy him while looping through the components, that doesn't matter. It's okay that we're hitting him twice. In the end, uh, we'll destroy him later when we actually loop through all the actors. Cool. Any questions on that? Um, how expensive is the uh, the overlap test to, to do like two um, at the same time? Is it is it bad that we're that we're now like invoking this this overlap test, or is it like really cheap? Ah, uh, it's not too bad, I think. It's like you know. Would it if... be would it be cheaper to like in the first loop, um, just add like try the enemy cast, and if the enemy cast works, add it to a set, and then when we're done with the loop, go through the set, or is that like are there reasons why you wouldn't do that? No, that would have definitely been another way to do it as well. Uh, if we were worried about cheapness, then yes. I mean, if we were worried about cheapness, I would probably just only do this, the enemy, and then do the ugly way of getting all the primitive components in. Uh, so I would change this to use an actor overlap, and then I would fetch all the primitives like I talked about before. Uh, so I would skip this overlap components and just do the ugly way of getting all the primitive components on every actor and looping through them. Uh, if I was worried about performance, that's probably what I would do. Okay. Cool. Uh, can you get like contact points of uh, an overlap, like uh, where it's intersecting with something else? Because like I, I was gonna do like a, a lightning gun, which is uh, very overscoped. I realized halfway through, and then I realized I couldn't even get the fucking character to move anymore. Uh, so that was fun. But then uh, I was going to get like uh, uh, I was going to sphere cast uh, along like a line and see if like um, uh, like I uh, I got contact points, and then I was going to like make particle effects to uh, for the lightning to chain to stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you do that? Can you like get the contact points of uh, objects that are like within a sphere? Well, it doesn't really make sense to do contact points for overlap, since I mean, what contact points only really make sense when something's moving into another thing, right? That's the only that's the only time it really makes sense, because that's yeah. the only time where it, one discrete location is hit first. With right. overlaps, it's like it could be any point on the overlap that's the contact point. But what you can do is get like the closest point on the shape. I don't know how to do that. It's probably like get like if I would it would be like get closest point on. 
Oh, here it is. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so get <laughs> get closest point on collision. It's on the perimeter component even, so that's pretty easy. That was simple. So oh. yeah, this will just give you, you send in a point, like a world point, and it will return what is the closest point on that collision. So if it's a box collision, you know, it will probably return one of the corners, like that's the corner that's closest to the to the um, uh, to the world location, and if it's a sphere, and then and so on, if it's a mesh collision, and so on. So this will probably be the best way to get like a impact point. It will, you know, if a chain lightning is lightning is chaining between two things, it will just take the closest point and go there. Um, you know, if it was a sphere trace, then that's the point it would hit because that would be the closest. So that's probably what I would use in that case. But no, okay. in the in the case of a sphere overlap, there's no really one content point, unfortunately. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but I would okay. use that. I think nice. it will look good enough. Um, all right. So this was this is one way of doing that. So we like sort of got the enemy actor and 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 fucked them up. Um, let's um, let's take five minutes. So grab some water, stretch your legs, and I'll see you guys back in five minutes.